point, sir. That balloon, it's dancing by itself. No, it's not dancing by itself. Was that a fun and lighthearted movie or what? <laughs> I thought that was amazing. And you know, um, something that resonated with me before we really get started is, um, I forgot who said it, but at the very end someone said, the oneness of all people and the respect for their differences. And I think that resonates so much with us today, um, with everything that's going on in the world. Um, if we could all take that home with us and um, have that be a part of our mantra, it would really make the world a better place. And so I just, 
I want us all to walk away with that thought in mind. Um, also, there were two words in the movie that really resonate with me as well, perseverance and kindness. And so those are also words that I want us all to take away with us this evening. So now, um, my name is Ann Fleeter, and I am very proud to share um, the position of co-chair of the Virginia Festival of Jewish Film with Debbie Fink. It's my pleasure to introduce Judy Beecher, executive producer of Tango Shalom and the actress who portrayed Ra Raquel. In order for us to leave before midnight, um, I had to cut my introduction of Judy kind of short. So here we are with some highlights. A New York theatrically trained actress, Judy's professional acting job in America was with Woody Allen, first professional acting job with um, us in America, was with Woody Allen, Coup Italia, a string of TV commercials for the Italian market. She has modeled in France, Italy, and New York, and it's really hard for me to sit next to her. But I'm trying, and I put my lipstick on, so. Um, anyway, she's modeled in France, Italy, and New York, sung in the south of France next to the Gypsy Kings, and as a chanteuse in Cologne and Barcelona. She has recently acted in a number of films, including Taken Three, starring Liam Neeson. She's also well known for her work in the video game Heavy Rain for Sony, where she plays the popular lead character, Madison Page. She has performed in more than 11 off-Broadway original theatrical productions, dozens of commercials, numerous SAG independent films, and has recurring guest roles in a number of live and animated television shows. On the other side of the camera, in addition to her producing work for Tango Shalom, Judy currently is directing the feature-length documentary Run Ronya, The Kindness of Strangers, and it's a story about her mother's harrowing escape from um, during the Holocaust as a child. Um, she's directed and produced only in Paris, which won Best Short, Best Romantic Comedy, and Best Actress for Judy at the New York International Film Festival. Judy is also a singer-songwriter an, and has composed and performed music for her own films, as well as having just released the single Paris Ooh La La, wait for that later. She's given me permission. <laughs> On Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Judy currently works between New York, Los Angeles, and Paris, and she's invited me to all of her, um, <laughs> You're welcome to go. and has joined us here in Tidewater to discuss her career and Tango Shalom. So let's give a big welcome to Judy. Um, so Judy, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, it's been lovely getting to know you, and I feel like we've known each other for quite some time. So um, can you tell us about your path to becoming an actress? And did you know you always, um, did you know that acting was gonna be a path for you? So first of all, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone. Um, so um, I always acted since I was three. <laughs> I was acting in front of everyone. I just, and I realized this the other, I love performing. I love being in front of people. Except when I was a little kid, I was really shy. Like I could do it in front of my family, but I couldn't do it on stage because <laughs> like nobody could hear me. I'd be like really, <laughs> like nothing would come out of my mouth. So growing up, I never really considered a career in acting because I couldn't get on, I was so shy and I was in front of anyone except my parents and my family and my friends, like my close friends. Um, but I was always singing and I was always performing at home. And um, so I went to school and I studied business and I, I studied you know, international government <laughs> and relationship, you know, I international relations and um, but then I started modeling also while I was in college. And it was just, it was very strange because I, I, I modeled, then I fell into a business, and then someone said, where do, you, where, do you, where do you see yourself in five years? And I was like, huh. Uh, I had a 
employees and I said well where do I where do I really see myself in five years so I got this book what color is your parachute and I did all the exercises and everything pointed to acting and I was like oh maybe I should be an actress but how do I how do I do that now so I called a friend who's whose brother was an actor and he said go to acting school <laughs> I was like no I already went to school I don't want to I was like, I'm gonna fly to I'm gonna fly to California and I'm gonna go get Robin Wright's part in Robin Hood, because she was dropping out. But I went to acting school and I ended up studying with like all of the founders of the actor studio. Um, with ev I studied with everybody at the same time, and because um, I wanted to be the best actress ever before I went to California, and then I flew out to California after I had studied for a number of years in New York. And that's how I began, and I thought it was going to be really easy. <laughs> that's that's all I have to say. <laughs> I was just going to like... I yeah. read What Colors Your Parachute, and I swear to God, I remember it told me I was going to be a firefighter. <laughs> oh, and you're a firefighter, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so at dinner, you talked to me about how when you were little, um, you filmed your grandfather. And I just wanted, I, I sort of went over all of my questions, and this is not one of those questions. But um, she is in the midst of um, filming um, a documentary about her mother and her um, harrowing tale about how she survived the Holocaust. And when you were little, maybe you didn't think you could be an actress, but obviously behind the scenes, you enjoyed um, filming your grandfather telling the story about his family. Can you fill us in a little bit more about that? I, I actually, I, nobody ever spoke about the Holocaust. No, nobody. My mother told me her story once, you know, once or twice in third person. She would tell it like a fairy tale. And like once upon a time there was this little girl and it was like never her. And my grandmother never talked about it. And I begged my grandpa to tell me the story. And I, I taped him telling the story, it was like five cassette tapes. And I filmed, I started filming all of the members of my family who were the elderly members to tell them what they remembered about my grandparents and the story. And um, so that, thank God he told us the story because he died two years later. It was a year after my grandmother had died. And um, so we couldn't, none of us could listen to the tape after it was so, it was so traumatic for all of us, including my mother. And my mother, um, my mother had been separated from my grandparents for many years. And, you know, thankfully they were reunited. She was put into hiding. They were in the camps together. They were in, um, they were German, German Jewish, and deported to Camp um, Gurs and Camp Riepsalt. And they were in horrible, horrible conditions in the camps. You know, they had, they had no food. They they were slept on the ground. They had bed bugs and bugs all over them, and no way to wash. And cold water. You know, it was co only cold water and wind. And they would sink into the mud. And um, you know, thank my mother. After she was there for about a year, a year and a half, and then they snuck her out of the camp. And my grandparents couldn't know where she was put. And she was put into hiding um, in a chateau in on the French-Swiss border. And um, my grandparents, um, when they started emptying the camps, they were arresting all the Jews in the camps, taking them to the death camps. And they hid in the ceiling of the camps, for ten, for uh, the barracks of the camp, for 10 nights. And, um, and then they escaped, w w you know, when they were bringing all the they they were arresting the people and putting them onto the the buses and the and the to take them to be killed. They got out and their story is a really incredible incredible story because the people they w the I'll tell you the first thing that happened. <laughs> There's so many things that happened, but when they uh, when they got out, they were going to pretend that they were tourists. That was their plan, and. It was in the middle of the night, so if anyone stopped them, they're tourists, and they're going to watch the sun rise. And a man on a bicycle rides by and turns around and comes back, and he says, where are you going? He goes, I'm the, I'm the police chief of the town next door. And they were like, oh, we're going to, go to, up to watch the, the sunrise up on the hill. 
And he's like, no, you're not. You're from that camp. You got to go back. And they're like, well, why do we have to go back? It's really bad there. Like, and and the, the, the officer pulls out a cigarette <coughs> tape and starts smoking. And my grandfather says, you know, I, I have some army tobacco that's really good. Why don't you try my tobacco? So he gives it to the guy, and he starts smoking the tobacco. And, and he says, yeah, this is, this is great. He goes, well, keep it. Just keep the whole pack. And he goes, no, 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 I can't do that. And he goes, well, where are you going? And he, they, they told him that they were going to see the, you know, they were going to try to get to the train station. They were trying to escape. And he says, well, look, I'm going to go ahead, and I'll see if the coast is clear, if there's any cops that are out there. And when they got to the train station, he was out there, and he waved them inside, and they missed their train that they were going to take. And they later found out, there's more stuff to it, but I'm just skip <laughs> skipping. <laughs> they later found out the train that they missed had been captured. There was, there was a murder on that train, and they had taken all the Jews. They found a whole bunch of Jews on that train that were taken to the death camps. Mm -hmm. So they had, you know, thanks to this man who stopped them, and then there was another, there was a guard that was in the train station after that that ended up taking them on the train and saving their life again on the train. And it went on and on, and there were raids and this and that. And this story, I was going to wait until I, <laughs> till I died. <laughs> until right before I died, this was going to be the last story I was going to do that was going to win the Oscar. You know, and I said she had a long and time to go, <laughs> so she had plenty of time to figure it out. But, <laughs> but my mother, um, it was her 80th birthday, and she said, I... And at, and at that time, it was when, you know, children were being separated from our borders. And she it, it kind of woke up in her this sense of separation from her own parents. And, she's, and she felt like, like, I need to know what happened when what happened to my parents mm -hmm. when that during the time we were separated. She was, I'm taking you back with me to Germany, you and your sister. And we went back and we followed my grandfather's tape to the different places that he told. And her mother story. went with her, and she's 85 years old. Yeah. So it's just incredible and amazing. Yeah. And it's, a wonderful, it's a wonderful story, and it kind of resonates and, and parallels with the concept that um, in the movie, just when people, when people come together, um, man's humanity to man, mm -hmm. and like that gentleman who helped her parents. Mm -hmm. um, so there is kindness in human nature, and I just have to believe in that for all people. Well, that's that's the why I got involved with this film and why I'm doing. I'm in the midst. I'm in the middle of making this film right now. We're we're not done yet. Um, for her mother, the for my run, run, run for my mother. We're just we're still trying to raise money to do the second part of it right now and shoot in, to shoot in France and finish it. Um, but w what's really important to me, it's not that it's my mother's story. It's that it's about people being compassionate to each other and people seeing each other, as in this movie, as people, you know, not as a religion, not as a color, not as a anything else, but they're people that need help. And, and, and when people are in need, no matter what color or who you are, you help them because a small action can save a life. Tiny, tiny thing can make a t complete difference in someone's life. And I'm, like, I cry when I say this, you know. I get I so it's emotional I because it's, it's, so it's people, n that's why. And then film is such an important medium because it can be seen around the world and hopefully it will touch people and change people and, and educate them. Um, so you actually mentioned to me that it's in Russian. Yeah, so this film right now, is um, it's called it's called hands off <laughs> in Russia, <laughs> and um, yeah, so so All right, let's hope well our brothers and sisters over there, you know. Um, you once said that your role in this film was your most challenging. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and why? Um, most challenging. Um, do you want me to go to the next question? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed doing this part. Um, you know, I do have um, a small portion of my family is Hasidic, uh, Orthodox in in um, in England, and 
it, I mean, it's very different from me, how I grew up. I grew up reform Jewish and with parents that did not believe in God and I do, but they didn't, and because of the Holocaust. Um, so, uh, you know, this, and I'm not, I don't have kids. Um, I'm, so I'm playing, a, you know, a very Hasidic woman who has six children. But for me, I, I mean, I loved it. I loved the challenge of it because I got really got to learn more about about Judaism, uh, more about, you know, I, I asked a million questions that I didn't know, and <laughs> I said, what about the sheet? <laughs> because I have to do all these bedroom scenes, and they're like, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> there is no sheet. <laughs> it's a wives' tale. But right. How do you, uh, like, you, go, you know, right. go into people's bedrooms and ask the questions? And right. Everything, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it was, it was very... Um, I loved preparing for this too because the women were incredible that I was, you know, I, 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 I spent a lot of time with the women, with the Hasidic women. Right, right. Yeah. So what was your, do you have a favorite scene in the film? I love the banana scene <laughs> 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 because that's the message of the, you know, the, of the whole scene is that there is just one banana. Right. You know, and, it's and there's many different, the different ways, yes. you know, many different ways to God and that doesn't make anyone right or wrong it's you know there's one god and and each one of us is right and we have our own way to to come to the same place so i thought that was it's a really beautiful awesome yeah. um so you've acted you sing you model you produce you write you direct do you have a favorite amongst all of those and are you working on any films now um, well, I love acting. That's okay. my, f my favorite, favorite thing is acting um, and singing. Um, and um, I do the others because I can and I'm good at like all the others. <laughs> it just kind of comes naturally for me. I, um, <coughs> I'm working on it right now. Um, I'm f trying to finish my film. We got, really we got stuck because of COVID and we were going to do a, a fundraiser right before it happened and then you know, my mother didn't want to travel during COVID. We stayed really confined, <laughs> you know. So I'm in the middle of doing that, and God willing, we will finish that film by the end of the year because it's imp really important. And my mother is one of the few, you know, Holocaust survivors mm -hmm. um, left. And um, I'm also working on a 1950s film noir. We're right in the middle of shooting that, and hopefully we'll also finish by the summer. Um, and then I just put out Paris Oh La La, the song Paris Oh La La, it's my <laughs> first song that I put out on, on all the streaming platforms and I did a music video last week um, and I'm planning on putting out I have a, a whole bunch of songs that are coming out after them, I actually wrote them a while ago and now I'm actually putting everything I'm putting all my work out and I'm writing a book as well Wow. Okay. Awesome. it's called Pray Meditate Write, The Teachings of Zolus that will be coming out soon, too. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I did read that Meryl Streep is, um, like, your favorite actress. And so if I could ask you if you could play any role, past, present, or future, you might have to take some time because this isn't a question I don't think <laughs> you've been asked past before. Present or future. For the English patient, <laughs> I'd play the No, <laughs> tell us, what, uh, what would you love to be? What role would just personify or just embody who you are as a person? And if you could kick somebody off the stage or the screen, who would it be? Well, I like The English Patient, okay. that, that film, The English Patient. Mm -hmm. I was a, um, but it would be, um, uh, you know, the, a role for me would be um, something that I could utilize all of my... Um, film I'm doing now, a more elaborate version of this where, you know, I'm a spy or, <laughs> you know, and I, because I speak, I speak a lot of languages and I do a lot of accents and I, I do all these, I do comedy and I dr do drama. So it's using like different, where I can play different personas. Okay. I gotcha. Um, so really just taking, um, taking yourself and just making you larger than life. It's not larger than life, just being different. I like to play. 
I mean, as an actor, you're playing different people. Right. You're constantly playing different people. And the reason I got into acting, I have to tell you, when I was modeling, people would say, y you don't look the same. You don't ever look the same, ever. In two pictures, you look like an entirely different person. And you love that. And I would be, really? Why, wha you know? Right. And, and they're like, you should be acting because you're so many different people in one. So that's what I'm saying, a role that can encompass these different personalities mm -hmm. is kind of that you know that I can be all these different people in one film. Okay, I gotcha. Um, so hasn't been written yet though. <laughs> so how does Parasu La La go? <laughs> you want me to sing it? <laughs> Do y'all want her to sing it? <laughs> Duh. So. P um, it's called Paris, this oh, Paris. Sorry. No, but but nobody know, you know. Paris, Paris, ooh, Paris la la. La la. <laughs> It's an old. So I I wrote this song for a film, and uh, it's kind of like a cabaret kind of a thing. So <laughs> I wasn't prepared to sing, but I will. She sing. she. But I will. I said I will do it. Yeah. I will do it. She said, "Would you sing?" I was like, at first I said no. <laughs> and then she went to the bathroom and sing. fixed herself up, and now <laughs> she'll want to sing. <laughs> so okay. Paris. Ooh la la, Paris, ooh la la. I'm not warmed up though. <laughs> the sidewalk cafes, the Eiffel Tower, the lovers kissing everywhere. Paris, ooh la la, Paris, ooh la la. Qu'est-ce que c'est cette chanson d'amour, de hâte, de jalousie? C'est bête que très peu de chansons claires, ça s'arrête mieux si tout finit bien. T'es où mon chéri? T'es où mon oulala? Je suis là, je te cherche, tu me chappes, je te suis. T'es où mon oulala? Je sais bien que tu me veux, je sais bien que tu me veux, je sais bien que tu es oulala Paris. Je te dors, mon amour, Paris. Je te suis, mon amour, Paris. Je te suis, tu t'éclates, tu m'embrasses. Je te... Ouh, la, la, Paris. And you can get it now on Amazon and Spotify and, all the, and on YouTube. I have a little, fun little... Um, music video that yes, I just put out fun. and it's it shot all fun. over the city, all over Paris. So it'll, if you want to travel, it'll make you feel like you're traveling. <laughs> it's very fun. So um, thank you, Judy, um, for sharing with us. We know some of you may have other questions, so feel free to take a moment to speak with Judy on your way out. Um, thank you all for attending the 29th Annual Virginia Festival of Jewish Film and the big Saturday night celebration of Jewish film. We hope to see you right here again tomorrow at 2.30 for the screening of Ben Gurion epilogue, followed by a conversation with filmmaker Yael Perlov, who is here with us tonight, Yael. Can you, s oh, there she is in the way back. She's waving. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon. Um, as well as at the Narrow on Monday evening for, um, s at 7 o'clock for Hester Street, a remastered in sparkling 4K, along with a conversation with Rabbi Michael Panitz, who's here this evening as well. Rabbi? Are you sparkling in 4K? <laughs> um, as you head out, please don't forget to pick up your take-home um, um, party in a box and it's with champagne and desserts. And we really appreciate everybody being here this evening and just being able to be together. Um, and also for those of you virtually, thank you so much for um, participating and we're, thank you and we're excited you're here and um, we'll see each other again tomorrow. Thank you.